This is the sixth video in topic five of everyday physics on what makes a car go. In this video, you'll be introduced to Newton's third law. Okay, so Newton's third law tells us that whenever one body exerts a force on a second body, the second body exerts an oppositely directed but equal force on that first body. So let's have a look at a few examples of where we can see Newton's third law in action. Okay, so in this example, there was a tennis ball which exerted a force on this paddle. You would have experienced this if you ever played tennis. Whenever you make contact with the ball, you'll feel the force acting on the tennis racket. So the ball's exerting, exerting a force on the paddle and at the same time, the paddle is exerting a force on the ball. So in this case, the paddle was exerting a force towards the camera, going forwards out of your screen, and the ball was exerting a force pushing the paddle backwards. These two forces were equal in magnitude, but opposite in direction. Okay, another example, you can be seen with this balloon. So I'm going to let go of this balloon. When I do that, the air rushes out of the balloon. So the balloon is applying a backwards force on the air. And at the same time, the air is applying a force on the balloon, forcing it to go forwards. So the air rushes out and the balloon rushes forwards in the opposite direction. In this case, these two forces are equal in magnitude, but opposite in direction. This is the Dr. Julian Berengut, who's a theoretical physicist in the School of Physics. He's going to help me demonstrate Newton's third law. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull on this rod here. Can you predict what's going to happen when I pull on the rod? Okay, here it goes. So did you predict that we'd both move? Newton's third law tells us that when I apply a force on this rod, then the rod applies an equal and opposite force on Julian, moving us both together. Now look at what happens when I push off in the opposite direction on the rod. We both start to move apart. Okay, so the question is, in space, an astronaut of mass 80 kilograms pushes off from a spacecraft of mass 2,000 kilograms. While pushing on the spacecraft, he accelerates at 2.0 meters per second per second away from the spacecraft. A. What force does the astronaut apply on the spacecraft? B. What force does the spacecraft apply on the astronaut? C. What is the acceleration of the spacecraft? And D, what happens to the astronaut when he stops pushing? Okay, so to do part A, we're actually going to need to make use of Newton's second law as well as Newton's third law. So um, we know how much the astronaut accelerates, two meters per second, and we know his mass. So we can use Newton's second law to work out the force on the astronaut. So the force is given by the mass times acceleration. So that's the 80 kilograms times the two meters per second per second. So that's 160 newtons. And now that's the force on the astronaut, but part A is asking us for the force on the spacecraft. So that's equal but opposite. So the force on the spacecraft is 160 newtons, and it's in the opposite direction to the, way, the direction the astronaut accelerates. So 160 newtons in a direction opposite to the direction the astronaut accelerates. Okay, part B is then easy. What force does the spacecraft apply on the astronaut? 
Well, that's the force which is making the astronaut accelerate. So that needs to be this force. So 160 newtons um, in the same direction he accelerates. Or we could say away from the spacecraft. Part C, what happens to, oh sorry, what is the acceleration of the spacecraft? Okay, so now we know the force acting on the spacecraft, it's 160 newtons, and we're asked to calculate the acceleration. So we can use Newton's second law, and we know that the acceleration is equal to the force on the mass. So that's 160 newtons over the 2,000 kilograms. So solving that one, we end up with 0 0.080 meters per second per second, and it's in the opposite direction to the astronaut. In the opposite direction to the astronaut. And then part D, what happens to the astronaut when he stops pushing? Well, when he stops pushing, there's no net force acting on him. So no net force. And if there's no net force, this tells us that he, from Newton's first law, that he continues in a constant state of motion. So he moves away from the spacecraft. at a constant speed. So hopefully he's got some rope attaching him to the spacecraft and then when the rope goes taunt there'll be a tension force which will stop him moving away from the spacecraft. But we don't know that's the case. All we know is that he's going to move away from the spacecraft at a constant speed when he stops pushing. So in this video you've been introduced to Newton's third law which tells us that whenever one body exerts a force on a second body, the second body exerts a f force on the first body, which is equal in magnitude, but opposite in direction. So in terms of what makes a car go, this is important when considering the forces between the wheels of the car and the road. When the car moves forwards, it actually exerts a backwards force on the road. Now we don't see this as an acceleration of the road, just because the road has so much mass, but that force is there. So the car moves forwards, the road's exerting a forwards force on it, and the car is exerting a backwards force on the road. If the road was icy, instead of pushing the car forwards, because it's the frictional force which is doing this, the wheels would actually turn and there'd be no force, no frictional force pushing the car forwards, so the car would just um, stay in the same spot and the, the wheels would go round and not push it forwards. So we'll actually be looking at the frictional force in a bit more detail in the next topic on what makes a car stop.